Spoilers for episodes 11 and 12. Just in case that wasn't obvious. Hello, I'm a stunned Lux. <laughs> and I'm an astounded Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 11 and 12. Oh my goodness. Poor Wise. I mean, just skewered. At least she wasn't lit on fire like poor Pyrrha. Yeah, Pyrrha was pretty much incinerated. I love how we both jumped right to that moment because we were both like, <laughs> I was kind of spoiled on this moment because of thumbnails and other things I've seen leading up to us actually watching this episode. So I was like, ooh, I know she's going to get stabbed or something because that expression is not an expression that you should see on a person not being injured. I just love Lionheart's reaction when they walk in. Oh, there's more of you than I expected. Why do you have weapons? <laughs> We're hunters. Huntsmen and huntresses. We kind of walk around with weapons all the time. It's kind of our thing. They're also guns. I'm still waiting to see if Jean's is actually a gun. Good point. Especially after being reforged. And apparently Jean's semblance is healing, which can only be attributed to Jeanne of Arc after she died when she was prayed to? Yes, when you invoke the name of a saint, you are trying to get them to intercede on your behalf. And there were several instances after Joan of Arc's death where her name was invoked in healing prayers and the afflicted apparently recovered. Do leave some interesting things up in there, though. It's like, his semblance is healing, but how much healing? Because she was stabbed pretty hard, but... What extent will Jean now be extremely tired after this? And that's his penalty? Because you know great power always comes with a great setback. Yes. I mean, just look at how badly Ruby collapsed the first time she used her silver eye ability. Which she almost did, but apparently in the middle of transforming, she got shot. Interrupting a transformation sequence of a magical girl? What are they doing? Also interrupting a special attack sequence. I know, right? But she apparently got some of the power off because Cinder was definitely affected. Mm -hmm, because apparently she was partially merged with that thing that allowed her to uh, absorb the Maiden's power. Apparently now she's part Grimm. This explains why when Ruby's power went off, it didn't affect the other Maidens in the room. Because her power would have probably still affected Raven and Renal were still in the room when her power went off. Neither of them were affected. I know we got the explanation of the silver-eyed power a while back, but I thought it was a little more selective than that. We thought it affected her because she was a maiden, but now it's revealed that it's because she was part grim that she was affected. Cinder, that is. Yeah, there's a lot of hers in this. Yeah, that's why I was clarifying. So it was the fact that she used a grim to get the power of the maiden. That made her get affected when Ruby first went silver eyes, silver eyes on her. I am apologizing for my weird use of phrasing. Moving on. <laughs> yes, apparently I'll just do the rest of the recording. I can still talk. I'm trying to come up with magical new words. <laughs> like the English language doesn't have plenty of words. Yeah. So yeah, there's that. And everybody fighting everybody and Yang being the one to figure out it's a trap because she sees Raven. Mm hmm. Now, the real question is did Raven do that on purpose? Because she could have hidden somewhere else. Yeah, she could have been much better out of sight, even as a bird. Mm hmm. So, did Raven let herself get seen? Because otherwise, it may have been a complete surprise attack. It probably would have been. As things stand now, it's reasonably equal, except the bad guys have two maidens and the good guys have zero. Yeah, I'm thinking the bad guys technically only have one maiden right now because I have a feeling Raven's on her own side as usual. Raven's definitely on her own side, but she's not on Ruby and Juniper's side, so... Well, that doesn't make her a bad guy because she doesn't want to hurt people. She belongs to a clan of thieves. They hurt people. Let me finish. <laughs> She doesn't want to hurt people for the same reasons that the bad guys do. Like Salem, from what we can tell right now, just wants to get rid of humans. That's a bad reason. 
Now, Raven, on the other hand, wants to protect a certain set of humans, which makes her a lot better in my sensibilities. She, she's still gonna get a lot of people, innocent people hurt in the process, but to me, she's at like 50 levels above Salem right now. Yeah, but you know, there's this little thing where she's gonna let her own brother and her own daughter supposedly hang. Yeah, I think she has plans for that. I think she has more plans for Yang than she does for Crow. Also, so did Oz not know that Raven was the Spring Maiden in all that time that she was spying for him? I think it actually happened later. I'm thinking that the lady we've been perceiving as the Spring Maiden was the Spring Maiden. And something happened to transfer the powers from her to Raven. Or Raven could have gotten the power from a Spring Maiden, not Renal, after she ran away. Because the power usually passes with the Maiden's death and usually passes to someone the Maiden was thinking of. Which oftentimes is the person who killed them, so that makes things awkward sometimes across generations. Yeah. Just a little bit awkward. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Boom. <laughs> And finally seeing Hazel not calm and finally learning some of Hazel's motivations. Because he was very calm in the, well, I don't want to fight either of you. Well, we don't really want to fight you either, but you're on her side, so we have to. Very well then. And then we see him lose all control. And very interesting how he stabbed dust right into him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, is that his semblance power where he can just, yo, know, you take dust, stab, I do things, or is this at his own risk? I would say this is at his own risk. Also, Oscar is going to be teaching Ozpin some new tricks. Yes, as soon as he gets control of the body back. Because Oscar was going to talk down Hazel, then Ozpin interrupted. Well, Oscar was still going to fight, but more defensively. And because of the conversations Oscar has had with Ruby and what he's seen with that team, he's in a good position because he's just a child and he's made a choice. And being able to show that to Hazel that, yes, people die. Yes, it's sad. Why do you want to add to the death toll? I also love how he clocked Lionheart. Oh, yeah. That was an excellent moment. Yes, I, I loved every bit that Oscar was in control. And just the way he approached Lionheart. Just very calmly, confidently. I really want to see more of the motivations of Lionheart. The more we see him interact with other people, the more I'm like, I'm finding him interesting. There's more to this. There's a big reason, not just fear that he changed. No, I'm thinking it's mainly fear. Osbin is Oz. Lionheart's the cowardly lion. I mean, come on, he's a lion faunus. Or did you not notice the tail? I noticed the tail. And right now I'm trying to figure out... Oh, it's Ironwood. I think this is his name. The general, yes. Ironwood would be the tin man. man. And Crow, it's there in the name, would be the scarecrow. Scarecrow. <laughs> if he only had a brain. Interesting. Well, you know, he's drunk how often? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it, it's a little more tenuous than the other two, but Ironwood <coughs> as the Tin Man and Lionheart as the Cowardly Lion. Huh, Glinda the Good Witch. And so does that make, give me a second here, not Cinder, the lady above Cinder. Salem. Does that make Salem the evil witch of the West? The Wicked Witch of, of the, the West. West. And so her motivation could be that Oz killed the Wicked Witch of the East. Wicked Witch, she's Sa Salem. The yes. Witch Trials. Holy bugger man. <laughs> so Ozpin may have killed her sister. Her sister was a maiden. Which is why it's all Ozpin's fault. Just like Hazel blames Oz for the death of his sister. Another theory of ours, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Interesting. And it would make sense that Ozpin is hiding more stuff than he's actually revealing because the Wizard of Oz pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. Yes, there's always one more secret with Oz. Hmm. Makes sense for him to give out gifts, too. 
Because when Oz was confronted at the end, he gave out the gifts of a brain, a heart, and courage. Also going off of our new theory for a moment and back to the show, interesting that Lionheart's key to unlock the vault was a clock that ties back to Ozbin. Yeah, and I think in The Wizard of Oz, I think he gave him a medal, but I think it was also a clock, or was that the That was the, the Tin, tin man, man, because it had a beat, because it ticked. <laughs> and what did the Scarecrow get? A diploma. Who graduated Huntsman Academy? Scarecrow. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Ooh. That doesn't bode well for Ironwood. Because if you go back to the original text of the Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man was re slowly replaced by our tin over time. Yes, because a spell was cast on his axe that every time he used it, it cut him. And every time that happened, he got it replaced with tin because someone was trying to keep him from marrying a munchkin woman. Hmm. And by the time he was completely replaced with tin, he no longer had a heart and no longer cared if he married the munchkin woman. Though, with that replacement, you could also use some of the same logic to point to Yang. Hmm. Lost the arm, replaced with metal. So, we could have Gen 1 Oz characters and Gen 2 Oz characters. Hmm. Though, Yang is Goldilocks, right? Because I know the four of Ruby, Ruby's Red Riding Hood. And I know the others have similar, are from a similar story vein. I just can't remember which character represents which. Snow White is... Is wise. Wise. That one's easy, but Blake and Yang are a little harder. Goldilocks makes sense due to her coloring. I just can't remember what Blake is. I'm gonna have to look it up sometime. Because I know they're each fairy tale characters. Yes, but the thing is, there's so many more fairy tales than the standard handful that people are familiar with. Especially if you go delving around in various cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Team Juniper is Thor, Joan of Arc, uh, Mulan, and Pyrrha was uh, the guy with the ankle. Achilles. Achilles. So those are mythical people that were actually real. I didn't realize the Norse god was actually real. Well, three of them are, actually, I should say. <laughs> yeah, she's the only one who's based on a fully fictional character. No disrespect to anyone who follows the Nordic belief system. But we should get back to the stunning story of, oh god, she got stabbed! And, wait a minute, he has healing powers? Also, Ruby, you're awesome. Also, wait, she's the maiden? Yeah, I'm an idiot. I figured that out about... 15 seconds, maybe, before Raven declared it. I was thinking that Raven was waiting for the moment to cast her thing, her portal, to teleport over to her once she opened up the door so Cinder didn't get a chance to actually walk in. But apparently, she was getting ready to cut down Cinder, then walk over and open up the door. At least that's what the plan is. Yeah, because I was like, Renal keeps delaying. Raven's in position, so why does Renal keep delaying? It's just so interesting, and I have a feeling they were, like, still suffering from the loss of Ohm, the original creator who did a lot of the animation himself. Everything felt really stiff at the beginning, but it's starting to get a lot smoother. The camera angles are starting to get a, little, a lot more creative, and I think they're getting over their hump because the... Fight scenes are looking a whole lot better. The angles are getting more creative. The only problem I had was when no one did anything to prevent Cinder from tossing the spear. They had a good 10 seconds where someone could have tried something. I mean, they have guns. Yes. Jean could have lunged for her ankle and made Cinder miss. I mean, there was plenty of opportunity for the other characters to do something. Because we've seen them, even in these two episodes, pull ridiculously fast reflexes and go in and block for someone. Yeah, to me, they should have gone with the route of she was walking over to throw the spear and she fends off everyone when she's doing that. I would have been okay if everyone trying to attack her and she blocks them and then she throws the spear 
boom. Or they shorten it down so she takes two steps and throws the spear. Makes it so there's no time for anyone to react. But this is, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. This is a good distance. I'm going to throw the spear now. That's how long it took, it felt like. The timing there could have been tightened up a little bit. And I just realized I was walking too close to Amber demonstrating. The <laughs> yeah, he's going to make our recording devices react to each other. So did you have any particular nitpicks or any scenes you wanted to go over? <laughs> uh, I would really, really like for the backup faunas from Menagerie to show up, please. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to happen right after the explosion that's going to happen downstairs. That or we'll walk out what, and everyone's going to go, blow up the bombs! You mean these bombs? <laughs> <laughs> You're not the funnest we brought with us. Nope, they're over there in that pile. Nice to meet you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or, were you looking for these? I think you dropped them. Here you go. Tick, tick. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's the thing. We barely saw the White Fang Faunus. So, by the time you get through these two episodes, you forget that the building is also rigged to explode. Yep, there's bombs everywhere. And Adam's really excited. I want to stab him. A great deal. Multiple times. Repeatedly. In very sensitive parts of his body. I would like to know more of his motivations. And then I'll kill him. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been thinking too. It's like, I want to know more. I want to know more. They're making the character so interesting. How can anyone be bored or... Ugh. <laughs> Or have any issues like, ugh. I had some friends point out some stuff to me like, yeah, you're not seeing the bigger picture. You're angry about this scene that doesn't matter. You saw this way in your head before this happened, so it didn't happen the way you thought it did. That's why you're upset. But it's happening a perfectly valid way anyways. Yeah, the thing is, your headcanon doesn't exist in the real world. That's why it's called headcanon. Well, if this doesn't match my fan fiction, I'm going to be very upset. Yes, yes, calm down, Seuss. <laughs> a twin? I saw that from the first season. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> well, very interesting. Now we're going to have a fight between Cinder and Raven because now Cinder is going to want to take Raven's power. And then open the door and Raven is just going to want to get through the door, lock it behind her, and then grab her null. Because this is where things are just going to get really interesting because this is definitely building up to the end of the season because yeah this was 11 and 12 so there's only two more episodes left yes and if you think about it where we are we have most of the lieutenants involved hazel's here lionheart's here cinder's here along with her disciples you have adam and the white fang you have blake and the menagerie contingent coming this is all going to blow up. That reminds me of this one line that Ruby says after Yang goes, Are you okay? She goes, No, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I would not want to fight Ruby right now. Nope. Mercury is going to be needing a new set of legs. And a few other limbs. And uh, Emerald is going to be, um, I'm thinking her wrists are going to be broken with the way she has those handheld weapons. I also see potential for Ruby talking Emerald over. Mm. Emerald seems the more fanatical of the two in her devotion to Cinder. So unless Ruby can explain how this whole thing with Salem is harming Cinder and that Cinder needs to be rescued, mm. she's not going to get Emerald. Uh, so shall we wrap things up? Yes, otherwise this is going to be longer than the two episodes. That's what you always say. Well, yes, and before the magic of editing, I'm often right. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 5, Chapters 11 and 12. And remember, it's also a subscribe button. Also, there's a like button and a share button and a comment button. We like comments. Comments are fun, even though I don't always answer them. We read them, though. We enjoy every single one of them. Oh, you like the art? Well, you can find more of my art on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. I almost said Google Punch. And Facebook, and I almost said Mercury, but that's not right. And Mastodon, and Reddit. 
when I remember and can find the correct subreddit for it. Oh, you want to buy some art? Well, I do take commissions. It is below in a link where you can find pricing and availability. Pricing stays steady, availability not so much. You know, real life. Oh, you just want to toss money at the channel. Well, it's not doing anything. You pick up those coins you tossed at the screen just a moment ago. We have a Patreon for your convenience and a coffee for your convenience. Patreon starts out at a dollar where you can submit suggestions and vote on sketches. Also, you can make a one-time payment of $3 through coffee. You get a thank you note, and if you ask nicely, maybe I'll toss you a quick sketch. Thank you for listening.